team. My name once again is Chagulani Sentamu Robert, although I'm more popularly known as uh, Bobby Wine. I am the leader of the People Power Movement and the National Unity Platform Political Party in Uganda. It's a pleasure to be able to once again represent the plight of my people in Uganda, not just the party that I lead, but the masses of the people. Uganda is a country of 45 million people, 85% which are young people under the age of 35. Um, recently, we just went through the most violent election that you can imagine, where more than 150 people were massacred on the 17th and 18th of uh, November. But even before that, massive arrests, abductions, and extrajudicial summary executions were done on the streets. However, even during the uh, elections, the European Union and the uh, United States election observers were blocked uh, from the election. Since then, the rampant abductions have, on, have been ongoing. Uh, the, the lawlessness has, has continued. And as we speak right now, thousands of young people are rotting in jails while uh, tortures and uh, you know, blunt and uh, beatings and uh, accrued treatment of their citizens is ongoing. The people of Uganda are only looking to the international community because while um, Uganda has never had uh, a peaceful transfer of power since independence, General Museveni having come to power 36 years ago through force of arms, we have constantly discouraged violence because we believe in non-violent actions of uh, transforming our country and changing leadership. Unfortunately, even when the people of Uganda have endeavored to be peaceful and to be moral and to be legal, they have been responded to with brute force killings uh, in the full view of the international community. The reason why I see this as a great opportunity is because we know that dictatorships like German Seven can only be uh, responsible and called out by the international community. In fact, it's a country that largely depends on international aid. And we know that German Seven can only be called to order when the voice of the international and uh, development partners speak out because Uganda largely depends on uh, the donations that come from the international community. While we appreciate the partnership of uh, the European countries with Uganda in terms of healthcare and education, we also know that dictatorships in Africa, particularly in Uganda, have been held and kept alive and indeed encouraged by the support of the international community. So it is my, it is my prayer and the prayer of my people that the European Union makes uh, the respect for democracy, the respect for human rights, and the respect for the rule of law, preconditions for uh, partnerships with Uganda. Otherwise, um, it is sad to speak, but uh, it continues to make developed democracies like those in Europe look like they're partnering in crime with uh, General Seveni's uh, repressive regime in Uganda. I am hoping that my uh, submission here will appeal to the morality of uh, the European Union and the European Parliament, and I hope that they will find the moral courage to hold General Seven accountable. Uh, because if they hold General Seven accountable, it will be a very strong precedent that will be set that even the leaders that will come after General Seven will know that the international community is not going to fold hands and sit back and watch all this criminality and all these human rights violations go on in Uganda. As I conclude, I will mention the most recent uh, plant and human rights violations that have happened. Uh, one of the most famous writers in Uganda who wrote a book called The Banana Republic uh, responded to a tweet by the son of the president who is clearly about the law, who was picked and whipped and uh, the pictures have been moving from social media with his back cut with a whip with more than a hundred times. Unfortunately, the world continues to look on and international aid continues to flow into Uganda, which international aid is lost 
in uh, patronage and corruption while the people of Uganda continue to languish in uh, desperacy. This is my humble prayer that once again uh, we are seen and uh, indeed held by the values of morality that bring us together as the international community. We know that the European Union can evoke sanctions against all the human rights abuses. We know that the, general, the European Union can uh, evoke the global magnitude against genocide, which will lay a good and strong moral precedent for the generations now and the generations to come. I thank you. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for your uh, commitment and. Uh, um, I must say that uh, uh, some of the points that you just raised, raised them are concerns for our group as well, for our political group. Um, and uh, we as liberals uh, in the European Parliament uh, have a strong plea for good governance, for rule of law. Uh, and uh, earlier today we discussed, by the way, uh, the, the question of how we can um, exercise uh, the power of the European Union for the better of the people uh, in our partner countries uh, on the African continent but also, uh, also elsewhere. So but I would now invite the colleagues uh, to, to take the floor to, uh, uh, to give a statement to ask questions uh, to you and we'll start with uh, Nico Stefanita who is, as I already said, the floor of the, uh, the Parliament resolution and then I will give the floor to Ben. It is an honor to have you here in the European Parliament. In my eyes, you represent the state. You should be head of state in this moment. You should be somebody representing the European Union because that was the expression that you wanted to go express. And I want to start by, uh, by expressing my sorrow for the loved ones you lost and for the loved ones many that people have lost, including somebody in my own constituency. I am a Romanian. And uh, I, was, um, I was alerted about this situation from somebody in my own constituency in my own hometown who's married to, to a Romanian citizen and I, I, I listened very carefully and I understood her sorrow and I couldn't just stand and watch. I'm also happy to see such young, talented, uh, smart uh, African leaders emerging. And one of the questions I came in to this meeting with is would, would we as Europeans should we talk, talk to dictators around the world? And I think that the answer should be really no. And we should really be firm in our, in our uh, actions. We, together with uh, uh, Anderson and other uh, colleagues, we have made Mr. Borrell aware of what's going on. We have demanded that we, was, uh, that we recommend sanctions to the member states and that sanctions are, are used in the state of financial and because sanctions are, are needed. Now, I want to make it clear for those watching, because I'm glad you have some like, like, disinformation at home as well, coming from the governmental side. I want to make clear, if sanctions are gone, these are not against the Ugandan people, they are against the leaders who, who torture you, who cut the internet, who uh, kidnap your loved ones, uh, who ban any kind of free expression and who hold on to power with their, with their life. Um, so, if sanctions do come, they are not against the Yulon people. On the contrary, Europe has been very careful to see, to watch also the, the pandemic situation, to watch anything that could help the people, but not the politicians in power. And I say that not only as a person who is, um, who is into foreign politics, but I'm also the budget rapporteur this year for the European Parliament, and I will make sure that the money that does flow from the European Union comes with accountability and it doesn't go into the wrong hands. Thank you once more for, for being with us. We are we are good uh, in our people uh, in, in our actions. Thank you. Thank you. I welcome now Petras Mastelicius. Thank you Petras for, for joining and I give the floor to uh, Thank you very welcome Mr. Wine and uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, it's, a, it's an honor to, to meet you. I've been following you on social media for uh, last year or more.
more. Uh, and thank Nico and John for this opportunity and this afternoon. So I, I understood you made two calls, one in relation to sanctions, and Nico has addressed that very clearly, and the other is in relation to development cooperation. And I remember a case in Uganda where the Prime Minister's office um, uh, refused a fraud in relation to 16 million euro, which was donated to the Prime Minister's office. Um, not the President's office, but the Prime Minister's office. Um, I think it was around 2008. However, the fraud was identified by the Office of the Auditor General. And the Office of the Auditor General had been supported by financial aid as well, international development cooperation. And so there is a sort of a balance that seems to be that has to be struck. While sanctions are good because they target the individuals they're meant to target, the problem with restricting development cooperation is that you can have a negative impact on the growth of institutional capacity, whether it's the Auditor General, the Office of Finance, or the Judiciary. So I suppose I'm asking you the question really, how do we strike that balance to make sure that we, yes, let's do the sanctions for the relation to development cooperation, how do we avoid damaging the socioeconomic Thank you very much. Indeed, um, I will once again reiterate my appreciation for the support for the international community, in particular the European Union, and uh, for um, on, on, on a, 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 a one on look, one would realize that indeed it is only the projects and the efforts that are monitored directly by the North, by the donors, that is the only place, the only uh, situation where international aid makes sense. Otherwise, like you have mentioned many times, um, the international aid is siphoned and lost in corruption. In Uganda, we have a situation where the president is the state and the state is him. We have total breakdown of institutions that he directs where all the aid goes to. Uh, many times aid that is aimed at uh, helping the people of Uganda is actually turned into oppressing, him, oppressing them, lost in, uh, like I mentioned, in patronage and, and oppression. Uh, so while we uh, support the uh, cooperation, while we support the assistance, we would suggest that only the areas where the international community directly focuses and directly supervises the aid, that is only when the aid makes sense to the people of Uganda. Otherwise, the aid that is channeled to help the people of Uganda is many times ending up oppressing the people of Uganda. Thank you for 